Hi and welcome to CERN, the European Laboratory for Particle Physics in Geneva. Behind me, our landmark building, the globe of science and innovation. And 100 meters right below my feet, the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider. To find out what it looks like, follow me on the ground. Hi Paula, welcome to the LHC. I'm standing here 100 meters underground, standing beside a dipole, what we call a dipole magnet. This is a very strong uh, electromagnet which bends the protons in the circle around the 27 kilometers. The protons circulate inside these magnets, one beam of particles go clockwise and one beam of particles go counterclockwise and they collide in the collision points. The LHC had to be made superconducting otherwise we, it would have been unaffordable. It's made superconducting so that we can have the strongest magnetic fields which means the highest beam energy possible. In order to make it superconducting you need to cool the coils of the magnets down to a temperature of minus 271 centigrade this is done by a cryogenic system, the largest by a long way in the world. It needs more than 160 tons of liquid helium to keep it cold. You've seen the blue magnets. Now the blue dipole magnets are needed for bending. The quadrupoles are needed for focusing the beam. We need to focus the beam so the beam is very small. Now the dipoles are connected to the quadrupoles by these mag so-called magnet interconnects. The interconnect is very complicated and probably the most complicated uh, part of the machine because of the fact that when we warm up or cool down by the 271 degrees centigrade, these interconnects have to take up the expansion and contraction. For example, over the range of temperature, this interconnect shrinks or expands by about five centimeters uh, during when we cool down from room temperature. This means that we need all of these bellows, sliding contacts and everything inside to ensure that we have electrical continuity, vacuum continuity and continuity for the beam itself to go around. Thank you, Steve, for this description. Let's now follow the protons until the first collision point. Thank, Thank you. you very much. During their journey inside the LHC, the beams of protons collide simultaneously in four points around the ring. To see what happens during these collisions, physicists from all over the world have built huge detectors surrounding each of the four collision points. We are now approaching collision point number one, where the ATLAS detector sits in a huge cavern. This is the ATLAS uh, cavern at point one of the LHC uh, accelerator. Uh, the two beams collide in the middle of the cavern and the collision point is surrounded by this enormous and high-tech uh, detector, uh, which is there to uh, reconstruct, measure, identify uh, almost all the particles produced in the in the collision. So these big detectors can be seen as a giant digital camera which takes pictures of the uh, collisions. But of course it has to be a very very fast camera because the two beams collide 40 million times a second and so the detector must be ready to take picture at a very high speed. The detector is 25 meter uh, high uh, so almost has a five-story uh, building and 45 meter long. So why so big? Well, so big because uh, you need uh, big volumes uh, in order to absorb and measure the very high energy particles produced in the collision of the two high energy proton beams uh, produced by, uh, by the LHC. What strikes people, of course, is the, are the dimension, the size of this 
a very big uh, detector. But at the same time, this detector has to be extremely uh, uh, precise because we want to track every individual particle with the precision of a few microns. In July 2012, the ATLAS experiment that we just visited and the CMS experiment that we are going to see further on in our trip around the LHC announced a big discovery. They both found the Higgs boson that is responsible for the mass of the fundamental particles we are all made of. Continuing our trip inside the LHC beam pipe, Three kilometers after the Atlas detector's cavern, we find collision point number two, hosting another detector, ALICE. Its purpose is slightly different from the Atlas experiments. Let's find out about it from our ALICE expert. So ALICE is the LHC experiment that studies the properties of the primordial matter when the constituents of the matter, uh, namely the quarks and the gluons, were not bound together. So the quarks are the, the elementary particles that you find inside the protons and the nucleons, while the gluons are the sort of glue that keeps them together. In everyday life you cannot really experience free quarks and free gluons, but we can do it in Alice. This uh, soup of quarks and gluons that are free is what is thought to have been there just after the Big Bang, when the temperatures and the densities were very, very high. What happens after the collision is that the protons and the neutrons melt, and then the quarks and the gluons are liberated. What have we learned so far in ALICE? So we have been able to recreate such exotic state of matter we have found that it has a temperature which is extremely high of a few trillion degrees. We have found that it shows the properties, very similar properties to those of a perfect liquid. We have found that it is transparent to photons but opaque to quarks. As we've seen with Alice, not all of the LHC detectors have been hunting for the Higgs boson. Halfway through the LHC machine tunnel, we find the CMS experiment, which shared with Atlas the discovery of the Higgs. So what you can see behind me is the CMS detector. In fact, CMS means compact muon solenoid. As you can see, it's fairly compact. I mean, the whole thing weighs uh, up to 14 million kilos. At this moment, you can see it open. The various pieces of the detector can be slid uh, apart uh, because we are doing maintenance. The uh, big cylinder you see here behind me is the solenoid. It's one of the largest uh, magnets ever built on Earth with one of the largest fields, which is uh, 3.8 Tesla, something like 100,000 times the magnetic field of Earth. The wall of chambers which you see here, these are muon chambers which identify and trace the particles which are called muons, which uh, have played a major role in the discovery of the Higgs boson last year. Because basically the Higgs boson can, uh, once it gets uh, produced, it can disintegrate itself into four of such particles. Now the muons would basically be traveling through out of the detector and through those great chambers which you see there and those are used to reconstruct the muon tracks. The event where the Higgs boson disintegrated into four muons have been one of the things, the most convincing evidence of uh, having seen the, the, this famous uh, and elusive particle. For us the excitement started when we started realizing that we had something and I can tell you it was one of the most exciting times of my life. More exciting discoveries are still ahead. The LHCB experiment and next collision point is trying to find an answer to a very special cosmological mystery. One of our greatest mysteries is the total dominance of matter over antimatter in nature. While all the observations we make of the universe come up with no spontaneous, no naturally existing antimatter around, 
The physics experiments where we do at CERN always produces equal amount of matter and antimatter when energy is available. Of course, if the antimatter would have been around for even up to a minute after the Big Bang, this would have led to large-scale annihilations and we would not have the stars, the planets and the galaxies that we have in the universe today. Of course, we would not be around to conclude on that either. Many experiments in the past have studied this problem and of course started to look for the sort of new physics that would explain this. In fact, we do see a difference between matter and antimatter, but it's much too small to explain how in the world it comes that all of the antimatter vanished in the first fraction of a second after the Big Bang. So by comparing the behavior of antimatter B quarks and B quarks, we hope to understand this question. At the LHC, we have access to more energy than ever, and in fact, it allows us to travel further back in time than any past experiment. At this time, the universe was largely composed of very heavy quarks, the ones we refer to as the beauty quark and the top quark. Now, in particular, the beauty quark is very interesting because it participates to a large repertoire of different phenomena. Now we've built the LHCb detector that you see behind me here actually to study B quark and its anti-partner that we call the anti-B quark. In fact with this instrument that weighs four and a half thousand tons that is 20 meters long and 10 meters high we actually measure on the collisions where we produce the B quarks and the anti-B quarks to understand if there's a difference in their behavior. During the first run with the LHC, now between 2010 and 2012, we've actually had almost 200 trillion encounters between proton bunches in our experiments. So with the help of these collisions, we've been able to make more precise measurements on antimatter matter than we ever even expected three years ago. And it turns out that the best model we have about the universe that we call the standard model is still holding out. Surprisingly, or maybe not so surprisingly, nature is hiding this problem of the disappearance of the antimatter very preciously. But of course, it leaves the run two with the LHC in a few years from now even more exciting. To find an answer to the matter-antimatter asymmetry question, the LHCB experiment needs more data. More data means more collisions and a higher energy. And that's what all of the LHC experiments need to increase their potential for new discoveries. For that reason, the LHC machine is currently being upgraded to double its collision energy. What are the physicists hoping to find next? We're really looking forward to running the LHC at higher energies because that will enable us to produce all sorts of new particles, if they exist. And anyway, we can always study the Higgs boson in much more detail than was possible with low energy LHC. So one of the new ideas that I'm particularly excited about is supersymmetry that predicts all sorts of new particles. And it might explain the dark matter that fills up the universe. So that's what I'm shooting for. This closes our virtual journey through the LHC tunnel and through its four experimental caverns. Hope you enjoyed it. I think, I think yeah. you just missed two words. I don't know if they're important. They're not. You said. <laughs> no, they're not. To improve the, you no, because it's too much. Position. I decided.